I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next one I play is randomly selected from a list, so I have no idea what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Hey, welcome back to another episode. If you guys do enjoy this video, consider giving it a like as it does help the channel out a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Game number 10, Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey, developed by Williams Entertainment and published by Midway in 1996. Apparently this is the first 4 player game ever released for the N64, although as you know, we'll only be covering the single player aspect of this game. So yeah, we drew another hockey game pretty early on, but this one's kind of different. If NHL Breakaway was going for a more realistic hockey game, this is going for the exact opposite. Actually, I think this game's made by the same devs as NBA Jam. So this game's like a 3v3 arcade style hockey game and it's actually kind of fun. So the way we beat sports games is we have to win the main championship for that sport. In this case, we do the playoffs mode, which is four rounds with a best of seven series in each round. While the Flyers were good to me in NHL Breakaway, I knew I needed to be the New York Rangers this time. I mean, they have Wayne Gretzky on their team. It's his game, right? He's got to be absolutely broken. Unfortunately, it turns out this was real close to when he retired, so he wasn't as good as he could be, but his stats were still really good. So for some reason, when a match starts, the two team captains like phase up through the ice or something, and it's actually so weird. So while this is an arcade style, it at least still has the feel of a hockey game. You're skating on the ice trying to shoot the puck into each other's goals, but it's a bit different. There are absolutely no penalties, and you can do some crazy checks on the other players. Even my own teammates weren't safe from my checks. I felt that one. I just checked my own- I just checked it. <laughs> this guy's taken over. There's also much higher rates of scoring in this, with goals being pretty easy to come by. You also can't control your own goalie, so it's up to the AI for that one. Also, as you might guess, this game absolutely features fighting. In this game, I did a lot better, and apparently Wayne Gretzky knows how to throw a hook. Uh, out. Oh shoot. Get him. game's hilarious. Also, you might notice a familiar voice in this game, as it's the same announcer from NBA Jam. I wonder how many gigs that guy had back in the day. Moving on, my first series was against the Montreal Canadiens. My first match ended with me losing 7-6, which is a pretty normal score for this game. I was just getting used to the controls, so I wasn't too bothered by losing. Thankfully, I was able to win the next match with a winning goal from Gretzky in overtime. Nine. Yeah, baby! Let's go. So unlike NHL Breakaway, this game doesn't have a way to simulate matches, or if it does, I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I had to play every single game in this playoffs, but at least it's only two minute periods, so it's not that bad. One thing that really makes this game stand out as unrealistic is all the power moves you can do. Basically, you have a turbo meter that refills through the game and you can either use it to skate really fast or do a power move. For example, you can do a power shot that lights the puck on fire and it catches the goal on fire if it goes in. Not really sure how you're supposed to defend that. There's another one where they just hit the puck so hard that it knocks the goalie into the goal with the puck. Ultimately, I won the first series 4-1 and moved on to the second round. Next up, we were against the Florida Panthers. The first match against the Panthers didn't go so well with me losing 7-6. It was really tough to consistently do well in this game. We'll find out the reason for that a bit later. I ended up winning the series against the Panthers 4-1 with a flaming goal from Gretzky in triple overtime. <laughs> Easy game, let's go. I don't know, the games all play out about the same, so it's kind of repetitive to just tell you the outcome of every individual match. I was starting to notice that every single game I played ended with a one goal differential. Like, no matter what, it always came down to one goal. Anyway, 
The next series was against the Washington Capitals. The main thing noteworthy here is that in the second match of this series, I won a game by three goals. This was the first time a game was decided by more than one. This is relevant, because I started to lose more and more, and I was wondering, why is this happening? I didn't really feel like I was doing anything wrong. Then, I realized what was going on. This game has hardcore rubber banding implemented in it. And if you don't know what rubber banding is, don't worry, I'll explain it. So, imagine you have a rubber band. And the rubber band's stationary, there's not really any tension, everything's stable, you know. However, if one side of the rubber band were to pull away from the other, leaving it behind, creates a tension force between the two sides. The one pulling away now wants to be pulled backward, and the one that's being pulled away from wants to jump forward to get back to that stable state with no tension. That's why in video games, this design algorithm is called rubber banding. Basically, when the score is tied, both teams' AI is performing at a normalized level. They're both performing identically. However, when one team scores, the rubber banding starts to kick in. The team that just took the lead will now have their AI perform a bit worse. Shots are less likely to go in, their goalie won't block shots as well, and they'll overall just be playing worse. Whereas the other team will have the opposite effect. Their goalie will play better, their shots are more likely to go in, and this gets exaggerated more if you continue to build a bigger lead. The bigger your lead, the more unstable the rubber band becomes, and both sides try to pull back to that normalized, stable state. That's why it took so long for a game to be decided by more than one goal, because if a team's winning by more than one, the rubber banding kicks in and says, hey, I don't like this, let's get back to that stable state. In this game, rubber bands hard. So now understanding I was dealing with this severe rubber banding, I knew I needed some consistent way to get goals. Otherwise, it came down to me hoping I got lucky near the end of the game. Thankfully, I found a pretty consistent way to score, and that was with one of the power shots. Basically, you have to be directly in front of the goal, but not too close. And if you do a power shot in this scenario, it's real likely you'll hit the puck hard enough to knock the goalie back into the goal and guarantee a score. It wasn't a perfect strategy, though, because the game doesn't let you stall out the timer like a lot of sports games do. If you try to run away, the computer will just be faster than you and take the puck away. There wasn't really a cheesy way to win matches in this game. Anyway, I ended up losing the series to Washington 4-2. I'll save you the clip, as I actually got super salty about all the rubber banding. So I used the game's built-in password feature to get back to start the series over from the start. With some time away from the game coming back the next day, I was able to take down Washington 4 to nothing and win the series. Finally, I moved on to the Stanley Cup Finals to finish this game off. I was up against the Detroit Red Wings. The series started off okay, Detroit won the first match, I won the second. I don't know, these games all end up playing out the same. It's uh, hard to talk about it much other than just how it turned out. I won the next match, Detroit won the one after, and it essentially turned into a best of three series at this point. After getting at risk of losing again, I decided I was fed up with this rubber banding nonsense. Since I would typically get a lead and then the computer would catch up to me after the rubber band kicked in, I needed a way to fight back. I decided I would literally just not press anything till the near the end of the game. If my theory were correct, the other team should start winning early, and then I'd easily be able to come back at the end and secure the win. And it went even better than I'd expected. Even with me being AFK, the other team was just playing so badly that I was able to get absolutely free goals. I was able to secure game 5 with this strat, getting an obviously lucky goal at the very end. Two. Yes! RNG! And the same strat worked for game 6, and I would secured the victory in the Stanley Cup Finals, finishing this game off once and for all. Yes! We did it! We won the Stanley Cup! The game plays like an ending cutscene for winning the final, saying, yeah, you won the Stanley Cup, and your team's celebrating, holding the trophy, and they're doing all these weird dances, and that's pretty much it. So there you have it, my journey to beating Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey. Overall, I think this game's pretty well done. It controls well, and it feels really smooth to play. It's overall just not that bad. The main thing I had an issue with is the single player and how the rubber band worked. But if you were to play this in multiplayer with some friends, I bet it would be real fun. I give it a 6 out of 10 for enjoyability, and a 5 out of 10 for difficulty, because it was tough to deal with the CPU. 
But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like as it does help the channel a lot. And if you want to catch future videos from this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. But yeah, thanks everybody. And here's a sneak peek at what is coming next. So there's 298 games on the list. No idea it could be anything. And 224. Scars. I've never heard of this game in my life. Uh, alright.